Hello, everyone. My name is Father J.J. Mech. I'm the rector here at the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament, also known as the Cathedral of the Arts. We've been doing a series of videos helping all of you to see some of the beauty that we house here at the Mother Church of the Archdiocese of Detroit. And today we're going to be covering chalices and some of the other vessels that we use for our regular liturgy, the source, the summit, the Eucharist of what we are about rich history in regards to these. Um, a lot of times people think that uh, maybe this was the kind of chalice that uh, Christ used at the Last Supper. Odds are that was not the case. But we have had this rich tradition and there are certain ways uh, that uh, we utilize these cups and there are certain uh, responsibilities that we have in not just using any cup for the liturgy. Chalice means cup in Latin, simple uh, translation. But what we have here, chalices have had a series of uh, formations over the years. Some have jewels and different symbolism. These two are regularly used here at the Mother Church. Some can be more ornate, like this third chalice. Then we have more simple chalices that we use, like this present one we use for daily mass, and then they even become more simple in this regard. These are considered cups and not chalices because those are used to go and distribute the rest of the, uh, plus the precious blood to the congregation. But one of the things that is uh, made a mandate by the general instruction in the Roman Missal is that they should be made out of precious metal. And so I wanted to bring that up to you and show you there's this beautiful chalice that we have here in storage, but it is not used because it is made um, out of pottery. It is made actually in uh, Assisi by a wonderful artist named Franchi. And it's got the wonderful symbolism of the Kairos and all of that, and this wonderful glazing. The problem, though, is that it is not a precious metal, and so we can't use that. There's a wood one here that we have that someone gave to me years ago. We can't use this one either. But this one, made out of olive wood, very ornately carved, we can use. Not, we can use it even though it's made out of wood because the interior has a precious metal. It's coated in gold. And uh, in the various types that we have here, this one with the wonderful, gorgeous uh, jewels that are on there. And it is an Art Deco form um, from uh, Father Baumgartner. I stayed in his room uh, after he passed away in a rectory where he lived and was uh, gifted this wonderful uh, chalice, which I think is so beautiful. But what happens is, the tradition is, is that the majority of these chalices are consecrated by using sacred chrism the same sacred chrism that uh, would be used to initiate someone into the faith or to make a, uh, a priest or a bishop. And, and so that is utilized. And over the years, these traditions have come about uh, where um, rather than having a communion cup, that some priests have their own personal chalice. The reason I'm pulling it out of this case is this is my own personal chalice. It is much older than me, and Father Berkey was a gentleman who used this the majority of his life. And uh, this is a stone from his mom's ring. If you look at the base of it and see how it's worn off, it has his um, initials that were given by his family um, in 1941, I think it is, on Christmas morning. If you look as well, my name has been etched in there because I use this for the majority of my priesthood. And it says Father John Joseph Mack was ordained to the priesthood on in June 24, 1995. Now, as you can see, it's a little faded. This is probably not the most expensive of chalices, but it's been regilded one time. Um, I had it regilded. It does not have to be reconsecrated once it's been regilded, but it is used to hold the precious blood. Now, what's significant about that is that the beautiful gift of our Lord Jesus Christ that is contained in here is synonymous with the vessel itself, and that is something that has immersed itself into our own liturgies. So when we say, let us proclaim the mystery of faith, and we say, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, well, that's not just bad English. What happens is we don't drink a cup. We drink the elements in the cup, but it becomes synonymous with the precious blood that is contained inside, first and foremost. 
So I'd like to take you over to some of the plates that are used when we celebrate the Eucharist, also known as patents. These areas, uh, the things that we have up front, are the actual patents used. Some go on top of a chalice, and it fits perfectly over that and is meant to be used for that. Some of them have a deeper lip, and they're used uh, to hold the, the actual hosts that are consecrated eventually, and they have it so that we can celebrate in that way. Some of you might be old enough to remember when uh, the altar server used to come and would put that underneath uh, so that any, uh, any crumbs that might possibly fall on there would be collected because this is um, the body of our Lord Jesus. And then these other containers back here, you might think this one might look like a chalice, this might look like a chalice, but it is not. It's called a saboria. And so these are utilized, again, they have the gold and the precious um, uh, metal inside, are used to hold the Eucharist and be placed in the tabernacle. The same uh, ruling, like this one we look at, this is simply a bowl to wash the archbishop's hands. So even though it's fancy, it is not made to uh, hold the Eucharist. It is simply used to hold the water coming off when the archbishop's or the bishop's hands are, are washed during the liturgy. These are known as pyxes. You yourself might be about the ministry of going and taking the Eucharist, which is why the Eucharist is stored primarily in our tabernacles, for those who are sick and need the Eucharist outside of the liturgy. And these must have um, the precious elements inside them as well because they hold the Eucharist in that. And then we have a simple other element when we have these hosts and they're flat because they need to be, um, they are not leavened bread, they're flat and they simply are water and wheat. The other aspect is when we use the wine, you can't add other things in that. It is simply, it has a certain, uh, a, a certain alcohol content and, and can't not have preservatives and all of that in there. And the, even the general instruction tells us that these must be fresh so that we can utilize them and they don't go bad and, turn, and, and be tarnished as, as when, because we consume them. It's gonna become the body of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and some have unfortunately added some flavoring over the years, we're not allowed to do that. You can only utilize it with, the, with wheat and water. And then even those who have trouble with gluten, we must use a certain amount of gluten within the, uh, the elements um, that are used for for uh, the consecration of the Eucharist. So I hope you learned something about the liturgy. Hope you understand more fully and please come visit us and pray for us here at the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament. God bless.